Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about Vulture, which is a low-cost cloud solution platform. So if you're a developer, you're going to need to deploy your code to the cloud at some point. But sometimes you don't require all the bells and whistles that come with solutions like AWS, Azure, and Google. That's where low-cost cloud hosting platforms like Vulture come into play. For less than $5 a month, you can have a virtual server up and running in the cloud. And if you use the coupon code below, you can start off with $100 free dollars in your account. In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to get started with Vulture and create your own virtual server in the cloud. Let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so the first thing to do when you're using a new cloud platform is to sign up. So just head on over to vulture.com and sign up. And again, you can use my coupon code below and you're gonna start off with some money in your account. And this should be enough for you to run the server for probably a couple of months. Anyways, go ahead and sign up and log in and I'll meet you on the other side. All right, so once you log into Vulture, you should have a nice clean interface like this. And you can see on the left hand side, you know, you have your products, billing, support. And then here are your running servers. And if you want to actually just create your own server, all you need to do is click this plus sign and go deploy new server. Once you're in here, it gives you a couple things that you can select. Uh, you can have cloud compute, high frequency, bare metal, or a dedicated cloud server. For mostly everyone out there, you're going to be using cloud compute. This is going to give you a basic server instance that you can use for basically anything. So up next here, we have the server location, and uh, you should just select one that's going to be closest to the users actually using the server. I will choose uh, Seattle for this one. And then scrolling down, you can select the server type. So I'm a big fan of Ubuntu, so I will select that. And then you can select your version. Let's go with 18.04. And then you can choose your server size, which is the pricing option. So usually just this $5 option is good enough for basically any development work that you want to do. Even running production servers at this capacity is fine as long as your application isn't too big. So I'll just go ahead and choose this. And then you have your additional features here. So for some reason, you might want to enable IPv6, but the DDoS protection and auto backups could be pretty convenient. Uh, this DDoS protection is pretty expensive, and I like to just run my own backups, so I'm not going to worry about either of these. You can add a startup script here, so the script will run when you start up your server. And then below that, you have your SSH keys. So if you go add new, you can see that you can add an SSH key here. So basically what you do here is you grab the public key of your SSH key and you paste it in here and you just add the key. And if you need any help with doing that, then go ahead and just click this link below and it'll describe how to generate these keys. I already have one created, so I'm just going to choose this SSH key pair that I already have. And then here we have firewall group, which is pretty important. You don't really want to leave it as no firewall you probably want to enable firewalls for security reasons because there's a lot of hackers out there that are going to find out that your server has a bunch of open ports so if you're not running a firewall uh, you're going to run into issues so go ahead and hit manage here and we can have a look at the firewall that I already have created so let's go edit firewall group and you can see that I have the basics here so basically at the very top I'm allowing SSH and you can't see it here because I have it blanked out, but it's basically just my IP address. So this means that anyone else coming in from any other IP address can even attempt to run SSH and try to figure out my password or present my SSH keys because the firewall is going to block everything except for my public IP address from coming in and managing my server. The next ones are is HTTP and HTTPS. So this is just your basic web traffic since this is a web server. Since I'm basically just running web servers on these boxes, I need to open up these ports and I'm allowing the source to be anyone on the internet. And then after that, we're dropping all traffic coming in on any port from anyone. So that's the firewall rule. Let's go ahead and go back and make sure we select it. And then we can give our server a name as well as a label. So I'll just go my new server. And if you wanted to, you could do multiple servers at once here and just name them all. I'm just going to go ahead and create a single one and then hit deploy now. Okay, and you can see that it is installing now. And uh, I must not have selected Ubuntu, 
or when we went back, it just reset the settings, but it looks like it's installing CentOS. Let's go ahead and have a look at it right now. And you can see the IP address, it gives you the root username and just everything about the server. You can take snapshots. Basically, this is a snapshot of the server. So if you're about to do any major work on the server, you might wanna make a snapshot first, perform your work, and then if you need to roll back, just roll back to the last snapshot. Uh, there's the backup section here. You can enable backups for $1 a month. Again, it's probably easier just to create your own backup script, but if you want the convenience of just clicking a button, it's only a dollar a month, so that's not too bad. Usage graphs are pretty good if you're running into any performance problems on your server. You can have a look here and see if it's a CPU problem or see if it's the disk or network that is having the bottleneck. Okay, so our server is up and running. What you can do here is click these three dots and then you can go view console and this is gonna give you an SSH session in the browser that you can use or you can just use your own terminal and connect to it that way. So that's how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna click copy IP address here. I'm just gonna pull up a terminal here and go SSH root at IP address. And then I'll hit yes. And then it wants the password for the first login here. So I'm gonna go here, copy the password and put it in. Now, if I wanted to use my SSH public key, I actually need to specify my public key just because I have so many different ones. So I do that with this dash I command and I specify my SSH public key and then I put in the root at IP address here. Put that in and it brings me right into my server. So anyways, that's all I really wanted to show for this Vulture tutorial. If you want to learn more about servers, IT, or DevOps in general, go ahead and check out the other videos on my channel. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next video.